So the construction insurance market today is hard. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's turning a corner from, or has turned a corner from probably 10 years of underpricing, overcapacity, so, um, and as a result, insurance companies losing money. And I think we are moving into a period now where insurers are taking back control and the pen and deciding and being much more prescriptive about what, what they write, if anything, and really looking to make profit and not worrying too much about their top line. Yeah, we were in a, we've been in a, in, a, in a place for a number of years where insurance in construction was very easy to come by and getting cheaper. And as a broker, I mean, it's great news because it was always a good message to clients. You know, your, your premiums come down or your price is cheaper on this project than the last one. Um, so this is the first time in my personal experience where we've seen a reversal of that and, and rates going up quite significantly and having to give bad news to clients. It's undeniable that in the last 10, 15 years, insurance claims on construction sites have increased uh, and the severity of them have increased. But escape of water has been a really big one. And um, you, there are many reasons why, you've, why that's happened and, and many different theories. There's a lot of people point to changes in plumbing technology and push fit connections on, in plumbing, which you know, in the old days of copper, when something was welded, it was sealed. Whereas now with push fit uh, joints, they are prone to expanding and or cracking and or just failing under pressure. Um, is it the industry's fault for not having enough uh, men on 24 hour watch or not, having, you know, not installing enough sensors because they're all concerned about their margins? There, there are a num 101 reasons, I think, why, um, why this has happened. And some of it is the construction industry's fault. Some of it is the insurance industry's fault for, for undercutting one another, becoming too cheap, I think, um, not asking enough questions and therefore not truly understanding the risks they're underwriting. I feel that there has been a sea change within uh, the sector within which I work, so real estate specifically anyway, and I think probably wider than that, in the last nine months really, since the turn of the year, there seems to have been a real renewed effort uh, and push towards environmental credentials um, and being environmentally and socially and, and governance responsible in a way that um, there, was, there was probably a different point of focus in 2019. I think because they, as a collective, have, have realised that the environment is is uh, something they need to take very seriously. I think also it's been f finally, arguably, driven from the very top down. So from the people with the money, are saying we want to invest our money responsibly, and if you don't do that, we will send our money elsewhere. I, I honestly believe that people, uh, certainly in, in in our society, have finally realised to a sufficient extent, almost dare I say it, to a tipping point, that there is an environmental crisis in our in our world, and we all have a collective responsibility to to handle and or, or to respond to that, um, to make a to sort of ensure there's a world there for our future generations. So I think I think government are helping to drive it, and I think they're. You know, their carbon neutrality targets are a great start, but I, I, I think it was always going to take a sort of a change of, of mantra from the top of the big corporates to really start to see things actually happen. And I think they as a collective have woken up, have decided that they, they do have a responsibility and they can make a difference and they want to, and that's really positive. Unfortunately, there will always be the, the balance of commerciality um, versus morals and ethics and, and insurers and, and brokers are, are corporate entities who need to make a living to survive. Um, and I think the debate at the moment is how, how they balance those two off against one another. So how they make money um, whilst advancing the environmental agenda and making sure that we do hit our carbon neutral targets. So. 
it is timber currently a commercially viable option in the sense of can we find a price point um, and a, a response that is acceptable to all parties and that makes this work for everyone. And I think that's the main challenge at the moment is finding that, that sort of middle ground where perhaps insurance for timber as we sit here today is expensive and um, developers are saying to a level that they never said before look we want to build in timber unless there really is a reason why we can't um, and insurers are saying okay let, now we understand your appetite for this is greatly uh, increased than what it was two years ago let's find a solution that works because as we understand it and as we know it at present timber is still high risk therefore we do need to charge you more and there's no getting around that but how can we find a happy middle ground where you are putting the right measures in place the right protections in place and and doing the absolute utmost that you can to make this timber development as safe as possible so that we can bring that price down so that you can you can build it into your model and it can be commercially viable for everyone and, and sort of find a happy middle ground. So an insurer on a given scheme will have a list of information requirements um, and it will vary by insurer because that's the nature of they have different, slightly different takes on things but essentially they, they might have let's just say for argument's sake 15 questions for a steel or concrete building. For a timber building that list might be 30. What the, the, the main challenge we have at the moment is they don't I don't think they necessarily know what those extra 15 questions should quite be um, because they don't necessarily, and, and myself included, don't necessarily fully understand the increased risk of timber. We know that it's a bigger risk, but we're not quite sure exactly why and how. Insurers right now are desperate for more information, I would say. Um, the challenge we then have is a, collating that information, but also B, giving them the time to read, not, and not just read, but also understand the information such that they can make a, an honest judgment of it. I would say there is absolutely no point at which it would be too early to an engage, engage a broker or insurer right now on a timber scheme. You know, get them involved at stage one, at Reba stage one. Insurers might even want to have a, a say in the design, um, so why not talk to them? They may not, but at least if you've asked the question, and they know that you're bringing tim a timber wrist to the table and they know roughly what it looks like and they can get their head around it and be comfortable with it, that gives you as a, as a design team that much more comfort that you're heading in broadly the right direction. That, that often, dare I say, is a, is a big part of the challenge is knowing who to, as brokers, knowing who to ask those questions of. You, you tend to have one point of contact or main point of contact on a given scheme and that can vary hugely. That can be, you know, that can be an engineer, it can be an architect, it can be a lawyer, it can be just about anyone in the scheme, whoever everyone else in the scheme has decided is the insurance person for the scheme. So there's not necessarily a, a consistent approach across developers as to who is responsible for insurance within their professional team that, that then liaises with the broker. Um, so that, that can often make the challenge slightly harder. Um, but I suppose it then becomes that poor individual's responsibility to disseminate those questions correctly within their team to then get their answers back. Insurers may shoot me for trying to oversimplify what they do, but insurers base most of their underwriting decisions on experience. They like data. Uh, and they like experience. They like to have been underwriting a sector or a product for some time and have built up a historical collection of data that tells them, you know, these are the marks of a good risk, these are the marks of a bad risk, this is how we expect something to perform. Um, and unfortunately, certainly mass timber is a sector where they don't have much data, so they don't have much to work off. Um, this sector, the, the timber sector, hasn't necessarily provided them with any of that data either where that, that could be an avenue to helping insurers. So when I uh, first got involved in construction at Gallagher, we so happened to be involved in insuring what I think is still the largest CLT residential structure in Europe. Um, 
and it opened my and our collective eyes, I think, to this market in a way that we didn't really know it existed before. So we thought, right, this must be a growth sector. Um, that was obviously a challenge at the time to insure, and that was in a soft market. Um, we still insure that building, and it's now a harder market and becoming almost harder by the year to insure it, even though it's complete and was well built. Um, but I think Gallagher, Gallagher is, I believe, very much interested in doing the right thing. I think they're a company as a whole who are um, very ethically minded and, and strong in their principles, so they are keen to be doing the right thing, which I, is one of the reasons I like working for them. But I think, at a sort of a micro level, we as a, as a team, as a division, have realised that we need to be doing the right thing. This is only a growth market. It, it is the right thing to do, but also a huge opportunity, um, if done correctly. And, and the world, there really only seems to be one way to take on uh, the huge challenges set by the government around carbon neutrality by 2050 in the built environment. And the only obvious solution right now is timber, in terms of carbon credentials. So, it, unless, unless I've totally missed something, it seems to be the only answer right now and therefore something that we have to understand, we have to embrace, we have to make work, otherwise we'll get nowhere near those targets. There's no other material out there.